Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Monday, August 7th, 2023. I am Dave Biddle, flying solo on today's show. I want to start off talking about our newest sponsor for the Bucknuts Morning 5, BetterHelp. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. We've all been through this stuff. You know, mental health is so important. So whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, Therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. So trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. I know for me, sometimes just talking things through with someone is super helpful. We can all get in our own heads sometimes and letting things out and just getting in that state of sharing your thoughts with a person, let alone a trained professional and getting feedback can bring a ton of clarity to your situation. So if you're thinking of getting therapy, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief question, fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime, no additional charge. Let therapy be, be your help with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash bucknuts today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bucknuts. Again, this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. All right, friends, let's get into it. We are three days into Ohio State's preseason camp. They will go for their fourth practice today. And then they'll move into their hotel later today, and then they'll have their fifth practice tomorrow. They're going to have a scrimmage on Saturday. I mean, we're into Buckeye football. So let's get into everything that we have learned from the first few days. I think the most pertinent thing is probably Sonny Styles. We all wanted him just to start somewhere. Like, we need Sonny Styles to be a starter, and he is. I didn't expect it to be in the slot, but I love it. And as we've talked about, if you didn't listen to Friday's show, with Jay Book and myself, like I expect Sonny Styles won't be your traditional slot safety. I think he's gonna be more of a rover back, meaning do a little bit of everything. Like he like literally everything, like blitz the quarterback, stop the run, cover, anything you can do as a defensive player, he can do it. And I love it. 6'4, 230. I mean, so when you you hear slot safety, you're thinking, oh, they don't they're gonna pigeonhole him there. Like, no, I I actually think this is more of like a rover back situation. So Love that. And uh, one more thing before we get to running backs. Zen Mahalski running with the first team at right tackle. We'll see if that stays true. I think maybe a lot of us, myself included, were too quick to say Jimmy Simmons, Josh Simmons. He goes by Jimmy. Jimmy Simmons was going to come in and be the right tackle. Well, you got to earn this job. This is Ohio State. You know, you're not coming in. You're not playing at, at Kent State. No offense to Mark Porter, former Kent State player Mark Porter, my guy. Um, no offense, but you're not coming to Kent State. This isn't Kent State. You're not going to just come in and, and they're going to throw you with the first team. You got to beat out Zen Mahalski. You got to beat out Tegra. And the little I saw, that's going to be a good battle. Simmons is not as big as I thought he was. I mean, he's like 6'5, 305. He's listed at 6'5, 310. Some people thought he was like 6'6. I mean, he looks like 6'5 at the most. If they list him at 6'4, I wouldn't have been surprised. He's not close to 6'6. So we'll see. I'm glad they have Jimmy Simmons, but I'm, my point is, could be Zen, could be Tegra, could be Jimmy. That's a good battle at right tackle. The other jobs are solidified. Left tackle, Josh Fryer, center, Carson Hensman, lock it down. We know both guards are coming back. Right tackle, that is a great, great, great competition. I won't be surprised if Zen wins that job or Tegra. And if Tegra doesn't win the job, I could see him like slotting inside, playing some guard. So we'll see what happens with that. But uh, and overall, I like this depth of the offensive line. We talked about like the main guys there. I think Vic Cutler is in the mix. He's bringing a, a guy that was a two-year starter at Louisiana Monroe is coming in here. Um, he can back up center. He can play guard. Enoch Vamahi, whoever you know. There's two guys who are going to lose that right tackle job, right? So you got Zemahalski, you got Tegra, and you got Jimmy. Two of those guys are going to be backups. So one can be the swing tackle. One can be a backup guard. So I think if, if Tegra loses the right tackle job, he could be one of the best backup guards. Um, 
I think Jimmy will probably stay at tackle. So maybe he could be the backup left tackle. Right now, the backup left tackle is Luke Montgomery, which I find interesting. Luke Montgomery, the backup left tackle, true freshman. So we'll see. I'm talking a lot about the offensive line because that is my – it's not even a huge concern, but that is my biggest concern when I analyze this Ohio State 2023 roster. Speaking of analyzing this 2023 Ohio State roster, I, do you guys love looking at football? I, I love looking at football rosters. Like, I just love it. Like, I don't care if it's like the Buckeyes or my Bengals. Or I just love looking at football rosters. I analyze this roster, and like, we all know this. I'm, Running back, are we not talking about the running backs enough? I feel like we're not talking about the running backs enough. Like, they're loaded. I feel like we have, like, PTSD from last year because of how, like, banged up they got. But, my goodness. So, everybody's back. Plus, Evan Pryor is healthy now. I mean, let's go through it. Travion Henderson, junior. Mayan Williams, fourth-year junior. Evan Pryor, third-year sophomore. Chip Trainum, fourth-year junior. Dallin Hayden, sophomore. Those are your five scholarship running backs, and I love all of them. We got a chance to chat with them a couple days ago, and Tony Alford. I love this group, and Tony Alford was just like making no bones about it. He's like, sometimes he might couch. Tony Alford's a pretty pretty honest guy, but he might kind of couch his answers sometimes if you ask him something like absolute. Like, is this the deepest that you've ever seen a running back room? You might think he'd be like, oh, yeah, it's one of them. No, he was like, yes, this is – this is the deepest running back room I've ever been around, one through five, no question about it. So I love this group, and I think Travion Henderson is ready to be that guy that we thought he would be. He is mentally prepared. There's no doubt about that. Then you look at him physically, looks great. And, you know, I think the only reason he was held back last year is because that broken foot, broken toe. So um, – and and – the good news is if you're a Buckeye fan, like if so, for some reason Travion doesn't work out or if he gets – if Trey gets banged up, you got Mayan, you got Dallin, you got Evan, and you got Chip. I mean, this is just – and those are the scholarship guys. You even have T.C. Caffey and like Will Hartson. I mean, they – I mean, but let's talk about the scholarship guys. That's where – I mean, this is as deep in talent as I can remember in Ohio State running back room going back like many, many years. I mean, think about the 2002 national championship season. When Maurice Claret was out, they were in trouble. When Maurice Claret was in, they could run the ball. When Maurice Claret was out and he was banged up with that, as we all know, that stinger that year, even in the national championship game, you know, he, he was in and out. But when they, when they like, used Lydell Ross, mm -mm, no. And they, were ba they only had basically three running backs. It was like Maurice Claret, Lydell Ross, Mo Hall, love Mo Hall. Winning touchdown in the Michigan game in 02. Great kick returner. And that was really it. They had Brandon Joe, who's a fullback. And um, and we saw what happened. When Maurice Claret got hurt, they were in big trouble. We've seen it. I mean, there's been times when they've had, like, two really good running backs. Beanie Wells, Antonio Pittman's a great example. Even I – don't, I wouldn't consider Mike Weber a great running back, but J.K. Dobbins, Mike Weber, so you got the tandem. But I don't remember, like, them going five deep like this. Don't remember it, and um, as we saw last year, um, that is needed because in the national championship game, they were down to basically like Dallin Hayden and Xavier Johnson, jack of all trades Xavier Johnson, who obviously plays wide receiver, can play running back. He's also played DB. He's played corner at Ohio State. I love that Xavier Johnson's coming back, the X-Man as they call him, coming back for his sixth year, can do a little bit of everything. Um, I believe he's finally on scholarship. Uh, I think he's been on scholarship for a couple years now. He originally was a walk on. I think he's, in fact, I'm pretty sure, almost positive, he's been on scholarship for a couple years now. So uh, love that guy. Um, the, the health of this team, let's talk about that as well. Um, running backs loaded. We cover that. We good with that. Running backs loaded. I feel like we haven't talked about that enough. So I want to talk about that. Health of this team, knock on wood. You could not be healthier ending a football, entering a football season than this team is now things are going to happen in camp we all know that but entering the season i am so pleased with where they're at evan Pryor is a great example of that coming back from his torn patellar tendon and um he feels like he's 100 percent now he knows there's probably going to be a pitch count but talking to him the other day i love evan Pryor. he's just he's confident 
but not like cocky. There's just something special about this young man. And you talk to Ryan Day, you talk to Tony Alford. They said there's no doubt this young man was going to have a big role in the offense last year. And then he got hurt about a week into camp, tore his patellar tendon. And uh, we're about at that year anniversary now, and, and he is looking good out there. He's feeling good. He actually ran the exact same route that he hurt himself on last year in camp. It was a wheel route. The exact – they wanted him – they didn't tell him ahead of time. They played – and then he he didn't even think about it till after the play was over. They were, ran a wheel route. He didn't catch the ball because it was batted down. It wasn't his fault. The point was he ran the exact same play that cost him the season last year. And that's, you know, as we all know, I mean, you got to get over the physical hump. But the mental hump of a serious injury is so important in sports. And that was big for Evan Pryor the other day to the, run the exact same play in practice that he got hurt on. And – no fuss, no muss, all good, and he's getting that confidence more and more and more. And I'm talking about Evan Pryor. He's like probably, what, the fourth string running back? That's how loaded they are. But anyway, I want to go back to like the overall health, you know, talking about Evan Pryor and the running backs. But seriously, I mean, like you look at across the board, this team is coming into camp healthy. Again, it's football. There's going to be stuff that happens. It's about mitigating the disaster from now, mitigating the damage. But I could not be happier with where this team is at heading into camp into camp now not just heading into camp three days into camp fourth practice is later today and they're as healthy as i can remember an ohio state team or any football team entering camp again that can change quickly but i like where they're at quarterbacks not a lot to report so far i still think i'll be i'll be very surprised if kyle mccord is not the starter i guess it wouldn't be the most shocking thing ever i had to kind of like a Collect my thoughts there. I mean, it, it would be surprising. Would it be the most shocking thing ever? No, but it would be very surprising. Maybe semantics there, but I fully expect Kyle McCord will win this job, and I fully expect Kyle McCord will have a very good year. Can he be elite? If he can be elite, watch out. But if he can have a very good year, that could be good enough for Ohio State to achieve all their goals this year with this wide receiving core, with this running back core. If the offensive line can play up, to their potential, which is, again, is my biggest concern on this team. I like the tight ends. You look at this defense, I think the defense is going to be much improved. Easy to say that right now, talking on a podcast. Easy to say, defense is going to be improved. Jim Knowles a second year, all these guys back. Only had one guy drafted, Zach Harrison, third-round pick. All these guys are going to be better. It's easy to say the defense is going to be much improved, but I honestly believe that, and we will find out. That's the good thing. We're not talking – this is not like we're talking in, like, February. Like, it's August. We're 26 days away. Like, it's going to be here before we know it, and I love it. We're going to be in Ohio Stadium West, Bloomington, Indiana, Memorial Stadium, a.k.a. Ohio Stadium West, like I said, before we know it for the season opener. And I absolutely love it. I cannot wait. I love this team. Is it a perfect team? Of course not. But, like, I love this roster. I've been analyzing this roster a lot. They are so deep everywhere as i said even like the biggest question mark is obviously offensive line right the one thing you can say about the offensive line is they are deep they are deep enoch vamahi is entering his fifth year for example back up and they like him they you know i mean like vic cutler back up they like him so you know we'll see what happens but um i love the depth across the board on this team Defensive line, yeah, I mean, we've heard about that. I know there's some questions about the defensive line. How much are they going to pare down the rotation? I believe Ryan Day when he says that. This is not like Larry Johnson coming out and saying we might do it. This is Ryan Day basically saying he's laid down an edict for his D-line coach. Now, he didn't put it that way, but, like, he said we need to, like, play our best guys when the game's on the line. We can't – you need to have a rotation. You need to keep guys fresh. You don't need to play four defensive linemen, but you don't need to play 12. There's got to be a happy medium. So I loved what Ryan Day said about that. And he, then he followed it up. I asked him about it the other day, and he followed it up. He was like, yeah, like, again, we need to rotate. We need to keep guys fresh. But, like, he didn't mention the Georgia game, but Georgia game, the game's on the line. Like, we need our best guys out there. Best guys, best four guys. And then they give one back, top backup for the D tackles, one – top backup for the DNs get your six best guys so you get your four starters 
one backup for the D tackle, one backup for the DN. And obviously you have more than one for the D tackles and DNs. I'm talking about your main six guys. Figure out who your main six guys are and roll with them. And if you need a seventh or eighth, you got them too. You got them too. Because if Kenyatta Jackson is the main backup at DN, Caden Curry is right there. Okay. If Ty Hamilton is the main backup at D tackle, well, I don't know if I'll say Tywin Malone and Hero Kadu are right there, but they're in the mix. And I like the depth on the D line, but I like what Ryan Day said. Let's make sure when the game's on the line, we have guys that we know can play 60 snaps or more. We're not worried about them only playing 20 snaps. They can play 60 snaps or more. They're in that type of condition. And if we know, I'd like to. I'd like for Larry Johnson to use the same thing that the same credo that Brian Hartline uses. Like, if I'm going to take you off the field for JT Tumalau, you need to be better than him. If I'm going to take you off the field for my call, you need to be better than him. And I don't think that's really happened with Larry Johnson. Hopefully, it will this year. I believe it will because it sounds like his head coach has given him no other choice, and I absolutely love that. All right, we'll leave here with this. You guys got to get with Manscaped. I mean, I mean, you guys have seen Dan Rubin. Do you guys think Dan Rubin looks that good naturally? Probably, but it's enhanced by Manscaped. It's enhanced by Manscaped. You've seen Matt Baxendale. You've seen Patrick Murphy, Steve Hellwagon, all these guys. Yeah, yeah they look good, but it's enhanced by Manscaped. And because of the Bucknuts Morning 5, you can get 20% off Manscaped. Any order. Any order and free shipping. So go to manscaped.com, use code BUCKNUTS, get 20% off free shipping. Manscaped, anything you want to do if you're a man, you want to look good, if any hairs you want to get off your body that you don't want there, go to Manscaped and we got you covered. Manscaped.com, code BUCKNUTS, 20% off free shipping. So there you go. I mean, it's. There's a reason it's one of the most popular companies in our country right now. So, again, 20% off, free shipping. Go to manscaped.com. Use the code BUCKNUTS. Unlock your confidence with Manscaped. All right, that's all for me. I am Dave Biddle. Thank you very much for riding with me on this solo edition of the BuckNuts Morning 5. We're going to be heading out to Ohio State in a little bit, watching – a little bit of practice. Guys are going to be moving into the hotel later this evening. Thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it very much. Hope everyone has a great rest of your day.